I remember sitting in on an interview that uh, Jermaine Dupri had on, I think it was like Power 105, mm -hmm. and he was talking about you, mm -hmm. and he was saying, and for some reason this, this always stuck in my head in terms of like how I do business, mm -hmm. and he said, when you, know, when you have a certain amount of success with somebody, you should stick with that person. For because sure. yours, a lot of people start to think that their success is their own success mm -hmm. when the reality is it's the success of a team or of right. the group. Right. And you know, he made a mention of like, well, you know, you see that Bow Wow's not doing the numbers that he, he was doing while he mm -hmm. was with me. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know what I'm saying? Interview, yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. 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 And it was like, I remember it really stuck to me. Uh, it was kind of like, okay, it's really easy to think it's all you. Mm -hmm and to kind of get beside yourself and not give the people who, who made this point in your life a reality. Right now. So after you dropped that album and it didn't do the multi-platinum, mm -hmm. did you and Jermaine start to talk after that? Yeah, I, I remember driving, um, it was uh, All-Star Weekend out here in LA and I was here, of course, I was performing and doing like a million other things and I was in a real dark place. I really didn't, want to rap anymore. It wasn't fun. I really didn't care about it. And I just said, to, and Sony was coming to me like it's time to work on the next album. And I told him, I said, listen, if it's not with Jermaine, I can't do it. Hmm. I quit. Like, I just won't fucking ever go to the studio ever again in life. Like, I just don't want to do it unless he's a part of it. I have to find a way to make this man a part of my album. He needs to executive produce my album. Okay. And, um, I got on the phone with him. I called him. I said, where you at? He was like, I'm in Malibu. He had a house in Malibu at the time. And I drove out to him and um, Janet's house. I drove out there. And I remember just sitting in the living room crying. Just crying to him. I couldn't even hold it in no more. Like, mm -hmm. just telling him, like, dog, like, this shit is fucked up, man. Like, how, me being young, I didn't understand the business. I always thought you was gonna be there for me. Like, you was like a father I never had, a big brother. Like, I felt like you fucking left me, bro. Like, you ain't have no artist, so nowhere close to what I done for you. Your biggest artist, yours. And I felt like you left me for stuck. I feel like you didn't teach, you felt like I was too young to, to get the knowledge from you of what was going on and why we split. Mm -hmm. And I feel like you backdoored me and went around and you told my mom and kind of kept me out of the loop and shit. And we just got it all out right there. And I told him, I said, look, dog, I'm not doing this next album unless it's with you. And we left that Malibu house, went back to Atlanta, and I'll be goddamn. Back to Amelia, fourth album. Boom. Let me hold you. Number one record. Right back. Like you. Sierra. Number one record. Back to back number ones. Boom. Uh, then I think uh, so many fucking records. And I, I forgot what came after that one. But Soon as I got back with this man, two yeah. number ones. He, now he's the hottest producer of the, of the fucking d decade at this point. He has two of my rec. The top four records are his. Like You's number one. We Belong Together is number two. Let Me Hold You's number three. And Mariah again at number fucking four. Right. This dude was on fire. And then it was it was go time again. We back doing arenas and we back doing what we doing. Right, because I think you know he produced uh, We Belong Together by Mariah Carey. Yeah. And I remember him mentioning that that was like the biggest radio song of all time oh, yeah. or something it was like it because it, it grabbed every genre like oh, every yeah. radio station every of every yeah. type of music from country to yeah you it's know crazy. like slow r&b to crazy. oldies was all playing this song and now he's back with you again and we doing and, and y'all doing it again yeah okay yeah so what happened after that um we immediately well i i was i was coming off road bounce I, was, I, did, I did the movie Roll Bounce. I was in Chicago. Um, that's why, I, a lot of people don't know, that's why I had to throw um, in the movie, was mm -hmm. the fact that me and Jermaine had a plan the whole time. He was just like, yo, keep the fro. You gotta get the braids back. Okay. And I, after the movie was done, I had my fro, we, we braided it back, we dropped the album one, it sells a million, we su succeed on that one. After that, it's shit, we, we go on tour, me and Omarion, we do the, the, the Scream tour, we do another one. Uh, I believe at that time, I go and do Fast and Furious, Tokyo Drift. Right. I'm hearing motherfuckers talking, oh, he can't do it, oh, he can't do it again, I'm way in Japan. 
And as arrogant as I am, I remember telling Jermaine's father from Japan, I call him and I'm like, hey, you know, I've been filming this movie for like four months and I feel like motherfuckers think I'm getting cold. Like, what's, what's, what's up with, like, you can't go do no shit for five, six, seven months without motherfuckers thinking you cold right. or you not hot no more. I said, so this is what we gonna do. I've been doing this movie for fucking ever. I wanna do another tour. And I remember like, what? Oh, yeah, I wanna do another arena tour in the same year. I wanna do two, I was screaming until we did the movie, I said, I wanna do one more tour. Who you want to be? Fuck it. Give me Sierra, give me Chris Brown, give me Omarion, give me them franchise boys, give me Trey songs, let's go. Got what I wanted. Boom. Put them all on tour with me. Opened up my audience to all of them. Yeah. Everybody. And motherfuckers, we sold out the garden two times in one year. Mm. And then after that, it was just it was just on. And then a lot of touring, then we got to the, to the album Price of Fame. That album goes platinum off of that, we dropped out of my system, right. fresh as I miss, shorty like mine. Love, loved out of my system. That actually got, got me through a little bit of a rough, I heard that a rough time, <laughs> you know, <laughs> going through some relationship stuff. Like you know, that that, that was definitely a song that talked to me. Yep, you've yep. heard that before. Yep. yep. So that, that, that was that was that should kind of show the maturity. Yeah. Because I feel like you see more. You know, you're tackling more mature right. subject matter. Right. Right. At right. that point. Yeah. But I had a lot of things that was going on in my life too. Um, you know coming out of a high profile relationship that led into the success of out of my system because my fans pretty much followed my life. So they knew who I dated, they knew what I was going through, and then boom, you know, and from from then it was back on tour again. Here we go, you know, and it just never stopped. It was always album, movie, tour, album, movie, tour. I kind of try to maintain the same formula. You know, no different than Floyd's formula. Two time fight two times out the year, give me May and you know, Cinco de Mayo and then give me September. Right. So it was like, you know when Floyd's fighting. It was like, we knew what our campaign was. Every year, every two years, we knew what we wanted to do. So you mentioned the, the high profile relationship. Mm -hmm. So at what point did you and Sierra start to kind of get serious with each other? Uh, we was, uh, it really wasn't until Probably when she dropped goodies at the time. Um, that was her first single. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, how we met was was crazy because she was an extra in my tour, my like my intro movie to my show. Mm -hmm. She was an extra. She was the girl sitting behind my classroom. It'll okay. blow your mind if I show you that right now on YouTube. She's the girl sitting behind me, okay. and she had a two way. And I remember Jazzy was always saying, "I got this artist," and I was like, eh, "She cute, whatever," but. I'm cool, and um, I always was flirting like, why you got a two-way? Like, why you got a two-way patient? Like, you ain't nobody, why, who are you? Like, you know, and um, we became cool, we got each other's number from there. I remember my mother always thought she was older than what she was. <laughs> and, you know, to this day, they're super, super tight, and you know, that's, that's pretty much, that, that was when it happened, and for me, I didn't really, I didn't know I really cared for her until I tried to like play her, being, you know, a dick, egotistic. She kind of bossed up on me. It okay. was a Jay-Z concert, not, you know, her record went number one and. Okay, what, what do you mean you try to, you try to play her? Oh, like on my Bow Wow shit, you know, she would call me, hey, let's hang, oh, you know, I'll, I'll hit you back. I remember Janet always telling me like, you know, Bow, she's a sweet girl. You should just, you know, you should try, you should. <laughs> I'm like, but Miss Janet, I don't know. Like, I don't know. And then Jermaine was like, it's gonna take for him to see that girl with somebody and he gonna lose his fucking mind. Don't tell him nothing. And that's how it happened. I remember it was the night of the Jay-Z show. Okay. You know, she's popping, you know, she the new hot thing. Of course me, I'm like, shit, hold up. I had like, I was first. Like, <laughs> let me, let me, let me bring this thing home. And it wasn't until after the Jay-Z concert, she she did some real boss shit. I said, I wanna take you to the Jay-Z concert tonight. She said, no, I'm going with, I'm going with my girlfriends. I said, oh, that's cool, I'm bring my homies. Now your homies too young for me, going with. I'm going with my grown girlfriends tonight. I'm like, hmm. what? And that night, T.I., Jay-Z, um, they brought her up on the stage at the after party. And I saw she was dancing and shit. And the homies in the booth like, ooh, bow, bow, bow. I know you don't like that. I'm pissed. Because to me, I'm like, man, they got, they got her up here like dancing and shit, doing up. Nah, and I remember the next day. It was over. I stopped playing games, and then it was it was a wrap. So after you saw that, you guys became official. Yeah, because we was always cool. We was right. always cool, and um, 
yeah, the next day, that's when I just said, you know, let me try this thing out. It's been a minute since I had a girlfriend. Right. But my heart is telling me, you know, something totally different. And it ended up becoming a great thing and a blessing that I did follow my gut that next day. I swear to God, God is my witness. The next day I drove to that woman's house and picked her up. And I had my butler cook breakfast at my house. Okay. Swear to God. So, I mean, I'm looking at the plaque here behind me, the Like You Platinum, uh, yeah. with, you know, platinum song with Sierra. Now, was this before or after you guys started getting serious? Oh, when Like You came out, it was official. Okay. We was on. Like, yeah. we was on. We wasn't hiding no more. Um, she was shy at first. I think our first outing was a Hawk game. And I remember me trying to drag her out forever. I was the guy that was like, who cares about the media? Who cares? Like, we cannot just be sitting in the, in the house. Like, we got to go have fun. And whatever happens, happens. Yeah. And, um, you know, it was a blessing, man. I, I respect her so much, and I'm so proud of her today. Just watching everybody who was in my life early on to watch us now at 29 and 30 years old and how we all have kids and people are getting engaged and married. It's like, mm -hmm. it's so dope. And I'm, and I'm, I really mean this. Like I'm really, really proud of her. Um, because I was, I was there in the beginning. I, you know, I, I knew it and she's well deserved of everything that she has right now. So I'm, I'm very, 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 very happy for it. What caused you guys to break up? Um, really me, <laughs> me. Um, you know, I felt like, any young man would have went through what I went through. Um, you know, I was in a, re a serious relationship early on in my career. At the hottest time, I'm the hottest of the, the hottest thing. Um, you know, once again, those, those influences. Why you in the house? Why you, why you married? Why you cooped up? Why, man, when Criss Cross was young and they were fucking everything. Like, why you, you, and I was a good dude. Like, I was a dude that would be like, Bowie going out tonight, nah, I can't all value a sucker. Man, why? Because I want to kick it with my girl tonight. My girl don't really got friends like that. You know what I mean? Right. I, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm going home. I was that dude until my ass went to a strip club listening to Nelly. <laughs> <laughs> so it, was, it was Nelly's influence uh, Nelly, bit. Nelly fucked my life up. Nelly fucked your life up. <laughs> <laughs> Big bro, I love you to death. But Mo, you, I, I told him this. Every time we, when me and Mo and Jermaine together, we had, I just told him this, bro, you my witness on the Sprinter. I said, yo, I blame you. You fucked my life up when it comes to women. If I would have never listened to y'all about strip clubs, I would have never seen what a fake ass looked like. I would have never seen what none of this shit that I love so much now that has got my head so fucked up. It would have never happened. And I went to my first strip club without them both, mm. which was a bad idea. Cause I didn't, you know, I think I spent like fucking 15 grand that night on one girl. And um, so pretty much it was, here he is, he's young, he's at the, the highest, at the height of his career right now. All the women want you. And my OGs is telling me this. They're telling me I'm not living. They're telling me I'm not experiencing the things that I need to experience. Sit your ass down when you older. And I was acting like grandpa at fucking 17 and 19. And then mm -hmm. I just started listening like, man, they right. And start being in the streets, clubbing a lot, not wanting to come home, and you know how that go. And I just got sucked into the game, man. And I just right. had to understand with myself that, damn, now is the time that I need to be alone out here and living my life. And we just went our separate ways. But we were still, we were still respectful and still cool. And her and my mom are still tight to okay. this day. Yeah. Were you still in contact when uh, her and Future got engaged? Uh, no, not no. at all. We went a couple years without talking. Um, okay. Just because, you know, you, you know, when we see each other in passing, it's, it's high and by. And, of course, I had her on 106 in Park for a straight week. I had her and Angela <laughs> on the couch with me, uh, right. which, was, which, was, which was cool. It, it was dope. I had a lot of fun. And um, we was cool then. I mean, we would talk during commercial break. We'll talk. I'll catch up. But, um, like I said, man, we, we were kids, man. Uh, right. You know, I think a lot of people don't understand that, you know, next year I'll be 30. And that, me and, C, me and C happened around, you know, 17 through 19. So were you her first? Um, that I don't know. Don't know. Yeah, okay. that I don't know. When you see her going through the drama with Future, mm -hmm. you know, with the custody and everything else like that, and, mm -hmm. and her, her uh, with Russell, mm -hmm. like knowing her the way you know her, like what is your take on all this? Uh, it's just an unfortunate situation for both parties, really. You know, um, uh, you know, being a father myself, I understand how, you know, women can get into your skin and, you know, they can, you know, play this game and how the system is designed to work for their favor. Right. Um, until they realize that it's really not, 
you know, even in, in my situation, it just works. Like, I think a lot of women, not saying see whatsoever because she doesn't need the money, but I feel like a lot of people rely on the system. And a lot of these women think that they can come up until they actually go in these courtrooms and it plays out the other way. Right. And um, I just feel like it's an unfortunate situation. They have a, a beautiful, healthy baby boy yeah. that I'm sure doesn't really know what's going on. No, he's two years old. I yeah, think. yeah, 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 yeah. And, um, you know, hopefully within time, you know, because time heals everything. Within time, hopefully they can come to some type of, you know, medium to where everything will be everything. You know, there was a point in time in my life where I was like, there's no way I will ever can be in the same room as my baby mother. Like, it's impossible. And I had to go through the immature stages. I had to ask my boys how y'all do it. And then next thing you know, it happens. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It just happens. As the child gets older, it just happens. So yeah. I'm sure they'll reach a point where, you know, um, they can get through all the mess. And I hate to see couples or, you know, parents have to go to court. It's bullshit. You yeah. spend so much unnecessary money on absolutely nothing. And this is the money I could have put away for my kid. Or I could have bought you a house. Right. You know, you, 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 you're you in court trying to get a home for me. But you don't understand I'm spending way more than mortgage money a month or weekly on your fucking lawyer fees. Right. So, um, it, you know, I don't wish... I don't wish child support, I don't wish court, I don't wish family court on nobody. Yeah. And hopefully, you know, they can come to some type of conclusion and, you know. Well, well Future got co-parenting, I guess. I guess she had sole custody before and Future got co-parenting, which I actually agree with. No, I believe, I think you know, unless Unless the, the father is just not wrecked there. off drugs yeah. and, and can't even function, yeah. you should have co-parenting. I, Especially I with someone who could provide, like a Future. And everyone needs their father. Absolutely. You know, with me not having my father, look at me. I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not all the way there when it comes to women because I felt like I never had my father there to teach me certain things. You know what I mean? Well, you so, had mentioned that your father was an alcoholic? Yeah, for sure. Big time. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's kind of like, you need that. So if you got a man that wants to be there, let that man be there. And vice versa. If you got a woman who wants to be, some deadbeat mamas out here too, Vlad. We got oh, a, oh yeah, some absolutely. fucking deadbeat moms out here too. But you know it works both sides, man. You you you, as humans, you come together to create this beautiful child, and both of you have the equal right to me and my mind to be yeah. there. So she seems genuinely happy with Russell, also. You know. Yeah, I think that once you reach, I, I think once you've in your life gone through things and you've been hurt, promised, broken promises, you fall in love. Love hurts you. And all of these things are preparing you for the grand story of something great lies at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. And I feel like she's done that. You know what I mean? Um, I, I, you got to be. He's something different. He's not a clubber. He's not a bottle popper. He's not a weed smoker. And he accepts the child. Like, you see him out with her and yeah. baby future. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. it's yeah. dope. Exactly. So... He's a role model to, I'm sure, millions of kids who want to be like him and play football and different things like that. And I think that it's, you know, it's, it's, it's different. You know, it's different. And I think anytime you encounter something different, it's like a new breath of fresh air. Plus, dude is highly respectful from what I see, um, even how he carries himself on and off the field. Sure. Um, to society, the quote unquote perfect, the perfect man, if that does exist. Right. Um, that's what every woman wants, yeah. you know, and uh, that's what I'm, I'm believing she has with him. Of course, they're engaged, and um, yeah, I just feel like she, to her, she's yeah. been trying to find that, find that. Now God has put that in her life, and I feel yeah. like she should be happy.